Hi there. Uh, a frustrating aspect that I found just starting to muck around with UE4 was that I was unable to import camera tracks uh, to create cinematics. Uh, now, there's been a few things released uh, with the 4.2 update to do with camera animations, and they're more additive animations to be used on a camera that you've set up. But in terms of actually importing, say, a matinee sequence that you've set up inside of Max and getting it to appear correctly, that's hitherto, to me anyway, been problematic, and I've seen a few questions about it. So, what I wanted to do first was illustrate the problem. So here I've got a scene set up with some obvious shapes to indicate the orientation of the world. I've also got a camera set up. I've got this set up to run on some helix paths, not for any reason other than it was a quick way to um, set up animation, and also to indicate that this method should work with any camera with any number of um, constraints that you've applied, because this is essentially going to end up being a source for the position, the rotation, um, and uh, the FOV for the for the resulting camera. So I'll turn those off for a second, and I'll first show you what happens when you export this normally. So I've got my scene set up, I've got my camera. It starts looking at my sphere. As I scrub ahead, it rotates around, looks at the teapot, then the cone thing, and then the cylinder, and then blah, we end up on like an awesome view of stuff. So um, let's jump back to perspective and uh, I'll grab this camera and I will simply export it uh, as an FBX. Uh, as far as the settings that I've used, uh, I make sure that I turn on animation and I get it to bake the animation. So obviously it would be nice to have just the individual keys that you've set up in Max to be able to manipulate them in, in Matinee afterwards, but that's not particularly feasible, particularly when you're using controllers the way that I am. So this example, we bake it all down, uh, and that'll be necessary for the final one as well. Got to make sure that we've got cameras turned on. Um, I have the scale set to automatic at the moment, um, a scale factor of one, because I think the scene was set up to be centimeters correctly. Anyway, as long as it's the same as your assets, that's fine. We'll export it, we'll hit OK, bam. We'll jump into the old Unreal, and here I've brought the scene in, and I've thrown some delightfully provided materials on all of these bits and pieces. Okay, so the way that we bring the camera in is that we create a matinee for it. We'll just choose Add Matinee, and I'll put it on the actual screen that we can use. And then all we need to do is import that FBX. It'll ask me if I want to create the cameras not in the current Unreal scene, but present in the file. Now, I don't actually know how to put a camera in the scene and then have it pick that up and use this imported animation on it. That would be kind of cool. If someone wants to let me know, that would rock. Um, because otherwise, you end up with lots and lots of multiple cameras in your scene. So um, I'll just move this over here uh, so we have a little bit of space. But as you can see straight away, with the preview for the camera actor, it's uh, oriented wrong. It's looking at the cylinder when it should be looking at the sphere. And when I scrub around, the animations come through fine, which is good, uh, except for the fact that it's all oriented incorrectly. Um, so there's a couple of things to consider with that. Um, one is that you need to basically trick Unreal into... Well, actually, you need to trick Max into exporting the right data. I don't know. You just have to make them trick one another. Um, so here's what I did. Uh, the first thing I'll do, because this is a camera that, uh, it's a target camera, and Unreal doesn't necessarily support target cameras, um, uh, even though it worked on our last export, <clears throat> part of the process we're going to do here, we need to use a free camera. Um, so I'm going to throw a free one in there, uh, and the first thing I'm going to do is set up some constraints. So I want to go to Animation, Position Controllers, and choose Position Constraint, and then just click on my original camera. And that's actually going to create not a hierarchical parent-child relationship, but an actual constraint. So it's going to say, every frame, make your position the same as this other object, which is handy. We can also do that for the rotation. If we put an orientation constraint on it, we do that. And now with our free camera selected, we can see that it's actually following along that track and working nicely. The final thing we need to do for this one, we actually strictly don't need to do it for this one right now, but I'll show you anyway. We'll right click on it and choose wire parameters. And this is kind of the same as creating a constraint, but it's connecting um, the FOV. So I click wire parameters and it gives me some options. So things like transform and 
you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, this time I'm going to do the FOV of this one. And then with this highlight whippy line thing, uh, I'll jump over and select the first camera. And then it's going to have a flyout list that lets me select the FOV of that one as well. This panel lets me determine which way the relationship runs. Uh, in this case, I want camera 001, or I would probably name it more effectively, at a, uh, you know, if I'm, you know, whatever. Um, bam, we want this one to control that one, connect it, we'll close that down, and now uh, any FOV changes that we had made would be propagated through. Now that we've set up our clone of the camera, we'll call this clone cam one. Uh, let's collapse it. And uh, under the motion tab, we have the ability to see the trajectories of the objects. We also have uh, the ability to set up this collapse uh, and convert it to and from splines. Um, the important thing is that the end time is the end time of your animation and that your samples are set to the number of frames in your animation. By default, it's set to one. And uh, I think if I were to do that now, it would literally create one key, um, which is not ideal because I have 320. So I'll make sure I set that to 320 and I'll collapse it. And now the relationship that previously existed between those position and orientation constraints with the other camera have now been broken and it's all been baked down. All right, now comes the bit where we actually set it up for Unreal because I could export this now and it would be identical to what we have in here where it's pointing the wrong way and doing all kinds of hinky stuff. I'm going to create a null or a dummy object. So uh, you could use dummy, a point, whatever. You could even use a box. It's, it's any piece of geometry that has a transform. Uh, I'm going to throw it in there and uh, I'm going to make sure I set it to zero in all of the axes. And then I am going to actually select the clone cam and parent it to that dummy. Then I will take the dummy itself and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees negative. So negative 90 degrees in the Z axis. So we rotate it around. So as you can recall, if we look in Unreal, we'll see that we were looking at the cylinder originally. We want it to be facing the sphere. So that's what we've done. We've rotated this camera around. Now, if I were to export this, it would still be wrong because it's part of a hierarchy and it's inheriting um, the rotation. So if I were to look at the trajectory now, it looks fine there. Um, but if I break it, the trajectory shoots off in the world and it's no longer inheriting it correctly. So, uh, let's just test it though. Let's export this one where it's been attached to the null. I'll just overwrite that cam one and we'll see what it does. So let's jump in here. Let's delete that camera actor. Yes, I want to delete it. Yes, I want to delete that matinee. I'll create a new one and I'll import that again. Import cam one. Yes, yes, we'll see what that looks like. So we can see that like it's broken. It's totally broken. It, because it's the camera was part of a hierarchy, it's not able to store like the positions as an offset from the root of the world. Um, so it got very confused and did something that's not useful to any of us. In fact, it's taken practically none of the data at all. It's written almost nothing. Um, in fact, probably actually nothing. Yes, yeah, so I will delete that and I will delete that one as well. Okay, so now back in Max, here's the cool bit. This is where we do that same process again, except we're going to create a new free camera and this time we're going to call it export. We are going to add a position constraint, but this time we're going to do it to clone cam one. And we're going to create a rotation constraint, uh, an orientation, bam, we're going to do that. And even though I haven't animated the FOV on this one, I do want to show you this. We'll right click and choose Y parameters, do the FOV. And in this case, because we would be inheriting from the original camera anyway, we can pick that one or we could pick the one that's been rotated. FOV is not affected by its orientation or anything. It's a separate parameter, so um, we can do it any way we want. Snap that one over there, pick the direction. Uh, we want export to be controlled by camera one. So we pick this arrow, connect it, bam. And... Now we have another duplicate and we will collapse it with exactly the same settings. Bam. So now this camera is not part of any hierarchy. It's in world space and it has been keyed for every frame for the path that we want it to have. So if I export this one, export selected, 
do that one again, yes. Let's take one last look at what our shot is intended to look like. Rotates around, beautiful stuff. Okay, cool, we know what that looks like, we've exported it. We'll throw another matinee in there. Bam, import that Shazam Cam 1, yes. Let's zoom it out and immediately, I'll just put this over here, you know what matinee looks like. Um, we can see that the camera is looking where we want it to. And if I scrub ahead, it rotates around and does the whole path the way that we want it to. So it's got correct position, rotation, and indeed FOV animation if we wanted to change the lens at some point during the shot. So um, I hope that that's been useful. I will play this now. Maybe there'll be some cool do 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 music over the end. There probably won't be, but there you go. That's how we get a camera working from 3ds Max into Matinee. Correct position, correct rotation, all that good stuff. Have fun, guys.